Welcome to the Frequently Asked Questions podcast, Fuzzy and Quincy. Oh, boy. Oh, this one is going to be, well, first of all, we're sponsored by uh, Zeta Wines. Uh, Zeta Wines. Yeah, we got a little uh, class. We're drinking with yeah. class today. Fuzz. Zeta Wines. Yeah, yeah, from, uh, from Napa Valley. Uh, this is really good. I don't know what the percentage of alcohol, but I had a, a glass beforehand and uh, yeah, maybe slurry. You, you, you good right now. But I, you know, I, I, do, I do the wine. I know this is your thing. All right. Our next guest, this guy, how can I put it? He's been able to effortlessly go into different lanes and make it look as if, like he's not trying. Like you may you may see yeah. him over here uh, doing top five as a pimp uh, from Houston, okay. and then you right. flip and, he, right. and he's hosting right. this, then he's doing the show on CBS, <laughs> and then he's a king of comedy, yeah. and he's just a legend. He's hosting from St. shows, Louis. Yeah, he's man. on skits with Jay Z and Nelly, yeah. and it's all effortless. We have the legend. Cedric the Entertainer. Let's get up. Yeah, man, it's the pull up. Yo, we appreciate this, this bro. This is big. This this is like people don't even know. We on the cusp of what Hollywood is about to be about. Mm. So we at BD Spot and, and Baron Davis. People don't know like he's been. He's like, of course, a legendary NBA player. Yeah. People loved him. You know, right. he had a, he brought a youthfulness to the game of basketball when like when Jordan then was the main thing, and then BD came in, yeah. and he was like, oh, okay. Like niggas is out there doing that. <laughs> ah, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Applaud yeah, that, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now you know here this, this compound where we are is interesting. Like mm -hmm. uh, coming here, I'm like we 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 south of Wilshire. Yep. Okay. Very so we yeah. south of Wilshire. Like we in the, we in some neighborhood shit, and it's here. it's a whole facility here where people don't know where we are. It's a full on compound with a lot of great things to do for creative people. So yeah. it's great to be here, man. It yeah. feels it feel like a different kind of this vibe. This is our home. Hell yeah. This is our home in well, LA. Well you know when you said it. it, you when you you like, yo, can you come down? And I was like, fuck Fuzz, like, I got shit going on. <laughs> Where is it? He made it work. <laughs> Sam made it work. You trying to be cool. Where? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Hi. Uh, the double chest rub. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. I'll be there. But, yeah, you know, nah, I'm glad it. I'm here. No, we yeah, thank you. We thank yeah. you to be here. Like, um, you, you just coming from the golf course. You, I love golf. Yeah. Uh, like, so I played at uh, LACC today. So it was very. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, very, very LA. Yeah. LACC is yeah. that. Yeah. That's the one on Wilshire, like across from uh, Century City that, you know, blacks couldn't play for many years, wow. like many, many years. So now I was the yeah. only one there today. So we getting there. Yeah. How, how long have you been saying. playing golf? Uh, probably over 20 years, but mm. but not where I get, you know, get to play really great. Me and Steve start playing together on the uh, old Steve Harvey show. Yeah. And okay. when, uh, the uh, Witsat, Witsat Country Club, everybody yeah, started yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Little small, little uh, par three course. Probably had the okay. same. Had the driving range. Yeah, yeah. Everybody Keith, went there. Keith, Keith it, Roberts. Keith yeah, Roberts. Keith, Keith yeah, Roberts. Yeah, 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 yeah. Keith was a legendary, man. That's the dude that coached us all for the most part. That's right. He coached yeah, me too. Keith, yes, Keith was great. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I got, I got some cafe. So I was drinking a little Zeta wine. BD, Shout I want you to taste BD. that wine. Yeah. You got to taste oh, that. Oh, okay. BD, yeah, you got to get you. Yeah. yeah, come on, BD. Yeah, yeah. 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 you got to taste. You got to taste the, the wine I yeah. did for my mom. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, but you you've been playing for twenty years. And yeah, about twenty years though. But you know, just but I played really well today. I had a good day today. So yeah. you know, that's how it works. Yeah, you just go out there. But it was a beautiful day. Great beautiful Sunday. Day. Played with some cool people. It's bit, you know, it's golf too. You do business out there. Yeah, yeah I need yeah. to get back on it. The Q, Q been telling me I need to get back. I've been on playing it. for like my bad. I've been playing for about uh, two years and I'm addicted. Like, I'm are you, like, are you a good player? Uh, I said I've been playing for two years and I'm okay, addicted. Okay, so you, right, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, I ain't get there thing. yet. Yeah, gotcha. you know what I'm saying? I ain't get there yet. It's golf, man. It, yeah. It's twenty years. I'm, I'm the same way. Yeah. So yeah, it's just, but it's, it's just the play. relationships that you you're able to build. And the connections yeah. and just like I'm, yeah, for sure. Yeah, my, my wife ain't you know she's not screaming at me because I'm out the house. So yeah, she gonna scream at you because being gone so long. It, you don't win. Yeah, with a wife. Say that again. In the good, all yeah. the way. Help me. Oh, you just get ready to do this thing. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I need to get back in golf. Though. Okay, I need. Well, all right, cool. I need to get back. Change stuff. Yeah, you. you said, no, no, no. <laughs> stop. No, first, no, man. I get it, man. I'm sorry, man. I hate to ruin your day, bro. <laughs> I'm here to be a guest, man. I'm not You're here, hilarious. Man. You're <laughs> hilarious. Yeah, my bad, Yo. bro. 
Like, I, Yo. he was like, yeah. Like, so anyway, let's just keep that moving. <laughs> Wrap it up. If you don't mind. Yeah, he, he pivoted. Uh, he, your boy. Yeah. <laughs> I let your boy. Let's keep it moving. Yeah. We're, I mean, there's so much to talk talk to you about. Yeah, right? not about me, about yeah, him. Yeah, let's, yeah. Let's, let's start. Let's start with the the latest project. Well, yeah, I mean, you've been doing it for man. it was Thank fifth you. season. The yeah, well, we're getting picked up. Yeah. yeah, so we're in the fourth season now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, they did a, a pickup already. No, a blessing, man. Like, you know, it, it was interesting that you said that because I, I feel like I started my career like that with this idea that that I was just, like, enjoying what I was doing and I didn't really necessarily have mm -hmm. a plan for it. I just, like, want to just kind of, like, do the things that I can manifest that come my way and then I just... I do them, and yeah. you know, if they manifest and they the energy that come to me, then that's what I, those are opportunities that are mine, and I just fucking rock them, you know, right, and that's right, right. it. That be the choice. It's not really like I'm trying to like intentionally be the biggest movie star in the world. I never really thought about it like that. Yeah, you know, so I have a great time really just living life, right, and not worried about the pressure. Like I gotta be the best at this, or you know, like I remember when comedy started, like really changed. Like of course, like Kings of Comedy was big. And we was doing arenas, and you had, like, one-offs before that. You had, like, uh, you know, of course, Eddie Murphy, Martin yeah. Lawrence, guys that can do arena tours by themselves, Yeah, you know. And then Kings came, and then, like, then you get people like Kevin and Cat, yeah. and these cats were, like, big. Comedy just started to blow up, like, individually. Yeah. And so people want to compare you to that, like your comedy as opposed to if you make people laugh, they want to compare you to, do you do that? Do you sell out arenas like that? You be like, so, yeah. sometimes, nigga. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I ain't really why I was doing it, but I get it, you know yeah. what I mean? Sometimes I be selling out arenas. Sometimes yeah, some, yeah. Sometimes it's just a club. I just go up in there and do it. You be like, why you do that? Because it's comedy. Yeah. But you guys, the kings of comedy had its own lane too, like sure. Grown, it was sophisticated. It was, um, you guys had your audience, like it was grown and sexy, but still, y'all was really lighting people's asses up, though. Well, uh, it, I mean, it's like, that was a very wonderful time in comedy, though. Like, it was a lot of things happening, man. Like, you know, shows that started to hit, you know, yeah. everybody had sitcoms. Yeah. It was like, it was, it was lively, you know, for being a black comedian at that time. So, to be able to, you know, be on a tour that did arenas was, it was fantastic, man. Like, yeah. you know, you know, Bernie Mac, Steve Harvey, and DL. Yeah. Like, these are my friends, man. You, you know, that shit was fun to be on the tour, like, with, with your, your guys, folks. right? Your, you yeah. just out. Like, you, and everybody different. Like, me and Steve were doing the show at the time. Me and DL had been cool. We did the BET tour together, me and DL, because he was the first host of B, uh, BET Comic View. Yeah. And then right. I became the second host. Mm -hmm. And we toured before that, just he and I. And then we had like some more on that tour. But it was me and DL as the uh, co headliners. Man. So we would do, but not arenas, we do theaters. Got it. But, yeah. but pack them out, like multiple shows. Yeah. Damn. So it was badass. No, it's just, I mean, just the consistency of, of your career. It's like now we see you and it's just like, that's I, I mean, that's it. Like we don't. It's almost like we don't remember when you came into our, our world. But it was like, yeah, I'm trying you to just you've been there. You've been there for over twenty five years. Long, long time. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, long, yeah. Long, like, long, long, definitely, definitely like thirty. So when it was eighty seven. I started Damn. doing comedy though, like in St. Louis, and then I got on Comic View. That was ninety four. Wow. And, uh, that became the host of BT's Comic what, View. What got you in doing comedy? Like from the like, what what got you into comedy to do stand up? I mean, you know, I mean, like like most people, like I was funny at the, in the lunchroom, that mm -hmm. kind of shit. Like naturally, like say funny things, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And then, and then you you started like comedy started to blow up. I mean, Robert Harris was hot, mm -hmm. you know, in lemon color kind of shit was popping out. So we started to see like Tommy Davidson's in the world, people that was like in our age group, they out there popping. Of course, you know. Fucking Eddie Murphy had blew off at like nineteen. Yeah, like yeah, he was yeah. like so again. Like we, we think about our kids grow up seeing like young stars like the Biebers and the Chris Browns has been in their life their whole life. Yeah, right. For us, we like had like we started to see people that was our age start to get money right around then. You know, people that yeah. was like your age. Yeah, they young. Jermaine Dupri them. They was young. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, get yeah, money. Yeah, 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 puffy. You know, like been getting money. Dog, they was nineteen, twenty years old. You like shit. 
Yeah. That started to be real to you, like in a city like St. Louis. So comedy was my like way out for that, you know, because I was working. I was the original Jake. I worked for State Farm as a claims yeah. adjuster. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. You in St. Louis? You like you don't have you had What's to stop. Job? Yeah, you want a job? Yeah, you had to step out of St. Louis to kind of like get it though. You had yeah, to. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Chicago is a great city, but comedy was starting to blow up. So Chicago is a great city. Dallas was a great city for me. Atlanta was a great city for mm-hmm. me. And these were these were towns where you can go get money, like on the weekends, and come back home with some money in your pocket. Right, like you right. go do shows in Chicago and come back home with fifteen hundred. Oh yeah, you, you know what I'm saying? Oh, like yeah. fifteen hundred for the weekend. <laughs> yeah. You like nigga, my rent is fucking uh, two. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so you up? <laughs> what, I'm up like a motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. We'll we'll pay you know whatever to lose. Yeah. I ain't going hard. I got a nice rip that's making it work. You coming up in the business? You can do Memphis. You can jump around. So you would ride from St. Louis. I can operate from the middle of the country and go get money. Detroit. Uh, uh, Louisville, Indianapolis. Once black comedy started to happen, like mm-hmm. on shows like uh, BT Comic View, of course, yeah. and then Deaf Comedy Jam, of course. Then that spread the word. That's all. I mean, that's 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 right there. Like early nineties. Yeah. Early nineties. Like, what, what was that? The first time you were like, "Oh man, I'm hitting nationally," and from a national perspective, like I can go get those bags. I can go to the Louisville because you see me on X, Y, and Z. Yeah, well, that that became the thing. Once I became the host of oh. Comic View, like I did it, I you know, I performed on Comic View the year before, and it was one of those interesting things, too, in comedy, like, because I did uh, Def Jam, and then I was hosting like a like a black night in St. Louis, I called Says Backyard, Hood, Gang, you know, yeah. the the... The, the street, the dope boys owned the spot, and it was they fun spot. They would come and kick it, you know, you know. So, and I would bring in comedians from all around, and so there was the spot, see his backyard. So I would host. I had you know local guys, and then I would bring in somebody from Chicago, Memphis, Atlanta, you know, Detroit dudes I knew from being out on the mm-hmm, road. They mm-hmm. would come there and be rock. So it'd be a fresh voice for them, and that became the night. So, yeah. you know, that was... Says Backyard. Yeah, Says Backyard, man. That was legendary. He, he, man. Yeah, he, he was the man. What? <laughs> <laughs> hey, said, do you remember the first, like, comedian like of somebody, like, that's on TV that's made it, like, kind of, like, a mentor you a little bit? Or do you... Do you did you have one of those? Or jotting. Or start Ooh. jotting down. Oh, okay. That was... That well, was I, I, would, I would say two experiences for sure. One was... In St. Louis, it was a big comedy competition. I think you can win like a thousand bucks or something. And Tommy Davidson was gonna come in to host the night mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and the the finals. And I remember yeah. that would be that would be my first, you know, like say like personal run in with like a big time dude that's doing yeah, their thing, cracking on living color. And yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. He, he, Tommy Davidson, he funny as hell, he killing it. And he came and he hosted the show, and then he hosted like the, you know. And I won that night. I won. Of course. And so that was yeah. like, but he was like, yo, and he always tell the story. And, I, and it's one of my favorite stories about, like, just meeting somebody you thought they was dope and they was dope. Like, they was dope. Like, he, yeah. he was just great, you know. And so then, uh, and then, of course, Steve Harvey. Like, you know, Steve Harvey was is another, you know, person that I met, like, in that capacity. He was, and he wasn't, he didn't even have his TV show yet. He was just known as a comedian. Mm-hmm. Like, in the world of comedy around, like, the Midwest, he was a headliner. Yeah. He was a big deal. Everybody knew who Steve Harvey was. So, I, I went down to Dallas, and the dude that, um, you know, brought me into comedy told me about Steve. I was down in Dallas. I got stuck because I was supposed to do a comedy club. When I got down there, they switched the uh, opening acts. And um, they switched to opening acts, and then uh, and so they wouldn't. They told me they they don't they don't need me, and I didn't have no job. And I was Damn. supposed to get three fifty. It was over. You remember that? Yeah. <laughs> and remember I that drove to Dallas, so like I was supposed to get that three fifty. Like that's my way to get yeah, back. Yeah, like yo, I needed that. Like so, Steve was doing a black night, and I heard him on the radio, and I went over, and then the dude, I told the dude at the door, man, like Steve, would, you know, know me through this other comedian. He let me in, and then it the, happened the guy that was on stage wasn't doing well, the headliner. And Steve was like, hey, I mean, you think you can go up and just kind of, like, get a crowd a little something? I was like, yep. Went up there. He gave me five minutes, lit it up. Yeah. And then he brought me back. He told me to come the rest of the weekend. He'll see what he can do for me. 
He gave me two hundred. Oh, I ain't get three fifty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But you had. It was but less come than, on, man. Better than zero. Yeah. Anything be take that, bro? What yeah. year was that? Oh man, that's got to be eighty nine ish, eighty nine and ninety ish, somewhere in there. Yeah, and but, it, you know, you gotta rem- he's but he's still holding. Remember that, Hell like, yeah, yeah, you got to. Yeah, I mean, you you know, you start from humble be- beginnings. Humble beginnings. Like, that's what know, I'm saying. Yes, you never forget that. Hell no. Nah. That's 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 comedy though. That's the story, right? You got to yeah. be out on that road. You got to get on the stages. You got to be able to, you know, it, tell it a, your story. Is it hard for you? Like you know, I I got three sons, right, and ten, seven, and and two, right, and I'm like, they're not growing up the way I'm growing up. Right, and your kids will they won't know that struggle. Like, right. how do you give them that? Um, how do you give them the grit without giving them the the thing that made you? Who it's you funny. Are? I'm glad you asked that because uh, somebody just yeah. just it's complimented like, on it's your like son. It. How do you give them the grit without giving them the gravel? <laughs> <laughs> They got to be on the roads, man. They got to be on the gravel roads out there. I don't know. Like, I mean, my, my son, I mean, mainly you got to do is you have to be sincere and honest with them. They they, they children. They people in the world. Yeah. That's their circumstance. So, you know, for the most part, I just try to have real conversations with my son because I know he'll never really understand it. But, you know, just like, you know, through experience, like, look, I, you, you, I don't live your life, man. You know what I'm saying? I don't get to go on vacations and shit and got a maid. I don't know what that is. Like I, I pay for all that shit. <laughs> like, you, you get to have it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You, you get to have that shit. I fucking go to work and pay for it, so I don't really know what it's like. You know who you know just gave your son a compliment the other day? I was the in great studio. kids, though. I just was in the studio with DJ Mustard, and he was talking about you guys are neighbors. <laughs> okay, yeah. And he said, man, Sad son is so down to earth and cool. Like, he drive a whoop, whoop, whoop. He just, like, he cool. Because yeah. like, we're, we're, we're having a conversation, like, our kids don't know what the uh, st- the struggle is, really. Oh. Yeah. Like, or, you know, I had to collect cans to buy Hot Wheels. My, my yeah. daughter, like, hey, daddy, can you cash at me $100? You know what I'm saying? But it's like the struggle. Like, you want your kids to have yeah. hard times, but you don't want them to have hard times. Yeah. Like, it's weird. It's you know what I'm saying? It's a balance. I mean, I mean, you know, each generation, you know, I mean, I definitely our parents wanted that for us, and they did it the best way they could, right? right yeah. we, for the most part, gave us the the type of confidence that we became the people that we are because mm-hmm. they wanted that for us. They was like, go and be, go be, be dynamic. Great. <laughs> yeah. They yeah, yeah. wanted it. You could tell they wanted it. They worked yeah. hard and whatever they Sacrifice. could do, whatever they what else they could do. I remember when my mother was a school teacher, an amazing person. But I remember, like, the year I jumped past her in salary, right? And she had been, like, making this money and taking care of us a year. And I just jumped past her, like, mid-year. And she was like, what is going on? Yeah. I was like, Mom, like, this is what, you know, when you, get, when you get to live your dreams and you just do and you feel blessed to be able to live your dreams, this is what you can really do. Like, you didn't really get a chance to dream because you was young in a situation where y'all was extra poor, and you just had to go to college. That was yeah, the next. That was move. it. That was the move. Go to college, get a job. Yeah. Right. That was uh, that was the dream. Not to not to be like, yo, I want to sell NFTs one day. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck that be? <laughs> My son told me that the other day. Said, Dad, let me sell an NFT of you. I'm like, all right, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah okay. Yeah, okay. Let's do it. Yeah. Shit. I, I, I obviously they mean something. As soon as I get in here, that's what Byrne talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, yeah. he's on it. He yeah. As soon as I get here, phone, like, yeah, check this out. yeah, look at your cup. That's the NFT. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Let's take a picture. Yo, I, <laughs> let's you in a double cup. It's how, NFT, my I want to say this. Shit. I want I want to say this in this respectfully. You've been around so long, and it's not like we don't. You don't. It's not like you're like, look, I've been around. Look at the private jet I'm on, right? Yeah, you could. Do I, that. You could. I would, but I did not I understand. I was like. You had a birthday. You had like a, during the pandemic, you had like a big birthday. Oh, right? yeah. yeah everybody birthday. came through the crib, yeah. Fuzz, did you see this? No. So everybody came through says crib, and I'm like, I'm trying to look around the corner because it's like, his crib looked like a, a neighborhood, right? I was like, like, damn, that says house? I was like, you know, LL Cool J, just people just pulling up. Oh, yeah, imagine zip. them, they grow, yeah. They, we did that's the pandemic, said. yeah. So it must, that's what Mustard was saying. Did he DJ the party? No, he came and did my son's, son's party. Okay, that's what it was. He, yeah, but I was before like. Before the pandemic. I was like, yeah, um, I'm, I'm, says doing, he's doing, like, of course doing he's really doing well. well. Like, doing but I was really just well. like, man, his driveway was like, 
like ten shacks could go uh, sideways. Oh, it was my so wide. Yeah. It was yeah. I was yeah, like, that's man. A whole thing. Yeah, it's a, it's a certain name for that kind of driveway. I don't know what the name is, but I don't, well, well, yeah, I, 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 I'm not there yet. Yeah. But yeah. you, um, you're doing good. You, yeah, you, you you're doing well. You get in trouble for that. You, my wife don't like showing off. So we Your don't wife never, is so cool. my house don't never uh, my house don't never be on nothing hardly. <laughs> my wife don't like. She don't play that. She don't really like. She's like, my home. That's where you live. Like, don't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm right. the, don't, you're not on the gram. It's like, my birthday though. Yeah. <laughs> Turn up. <laughs> Fuck nigga, real shit. Nigga, me a motherfucking money phone. Nigga, I'm wild. Nigga, I just need to call my niggas. <laughs> she, she ain't with that. Hey, babe, put this back in the safe. <laughs> I walk downstairs with a money phone. Yeah. I'm wild. I'm wild with it. Yeah, no. Uh, that, yeah. That's why they get they get used to it. You got to be yourself. Hell yeah. That's Do your wife be. laugh at you? Yes. She okay, good. That's good. She's funny too though. We got, you know, she's a great person so we, she real like you said my wife's super easy going and cute, yeah. you know, laid back. She comfortable in her own skin, man. That's a beautiful thing. Yeah, it is. It's perfect. Yeah. A lot, a lot of a lot of guys don't, you know, their their girls probably don't like, "You ain't funny." Yeah, I'm like, "Yeah, no, no, I've seen that done." Yeah, she likes a good laugh. That's for him. So well, that's what good. paying the bills too. God damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get it. Yeah, yeah. So how do you? What's the next challenge, right? Because it it, it appears from the outside looking in that you've done everything that you wanted to do. You know, you you have a life that you you know you work hard for. What's the next thing? Like the CBS thing. Like I want. I was looking at it. Like I think you guys are. Well, at time of taping, 75, 80 episodes. I'm like, oh. They get, get to 100, 100 episodes, you just, you know. Yeah. You could, you know, what's the. Well, five seasons is that, for, you know, but then just producing more, taking the deal, like really trying to put more people on with the situation. Yeah. And, you know, if you can put people on in the, in the situation, that's really how you grow the business, you know, because as an individual, I'm always be just one person, right? But if I can, like, literally take this opportunity and make it wide for everybody, then I actually have more power than just being Got the it. one person. Got it. And so, like, you know, you learn that with producing. And so right now, that's what I'm really trying to do is, like, we put a lot of black directors on our show. Nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm directing this week, matter of fact. Nice. So this is, a, this is my first time in four seasons directing my show. I did uh, one of my Soul Man shows that I had on uh, on uh, with CW. TV? What was that? No, TV, oh, Land? That TV Land. Yeah, yeah. TV, TV Land with me and Nisi. And, um... And so that was uh, uh, directed over there, but now this is my first time on CBS directing. So, wow. oh, that's dope. Yeah, tomorrow, Are you I'm nervous doing this week of directing, or is that just some? No, man, it's, it's like it's like I say, I manifested this shit. Yeah, like I fucking wanted to do it. I was like believe in it. I was like, yo, like I, I can do this. Shit. I see this show. This is my show. Hell I know yeah. exactly how this show should look. I wanted, you know, I'm gonna do it and have fun. I had a, got got a great episode to direct where. Um, uh, to Sheena's girl group, she used to be in a group like In Vogue. Mm-hmm. They come back together to do a show like, are they still alive? <laughs> <laughs> the Where are they now? <laughs> That's the show, but right. are they still alive? <laughs> <laughs> That's what we need to know. <laughs> yeah. That's hilarious. That's, what the, that's the question of this show. And then they perform. And so, wow. So, so I got a great cast put together. I got the girl, Shanola Hampton from uh, Shameless. Mm-hmm. You know the, the the black girl that was oh, with yeah, the white yeah, yeah. she was laying there, and then I got Breely Evans, another like great actress, singer, local, dope. So that's gonna be and Tashina. So they gonna kill it. Like that's yeah. just fun. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's fun. I'm excited about it, man. That's good. Yeah. Yo, said let me ask you a question about comedy and stand up. And what do you guys do about when people jack material or steal material? Ooh. Do you ever step to somebody like motherfucker? Yeah, sometimes you, know you, you do. I mean, it definitely was a big deal, like, early on. And mm-hmm. I would say more in the 90s, it definitely became a thing where, you know, where people would, like, just borrow your jokes or take your jokes. And then, you know, comedy is definitely a thing where people may have a subject matter that feel like it's the same or whatever to that degree. But yeah. that that's a part of this business. And, yeah, if you, if you feel like somebody's definitely stealing your material, then you got to say something about that, you yeah. know what I mean? And then you had those situations where a person can be like, motherfucker, that ain't your joke. Blah, blah, blah. But you could tell, because joke usually have a, a real, like, it's like it's like the birth of a, a 
of a baby. Like it come from something. Yeah. Like you can tell it's like where I, yeah. Like I was thinking about this and that led to this and that's how I wrote that joke. Yeah. You know, like, you know, it, and you could tell when somebody wrote the joke because they like have a whole way to tell the joke, you know, very unique. Got it's, it. it's got DNA to it. Mm. Opposed to just jacking a whole idea or something. You can, you, I mean, you can know, you can know when somebody jacks somebody idea, like you jack their joke because you know you don't tell it with the, the same degree of authenticity as I first heard the joke or or somebody or the else. Or experience yeah. the joke. Yeah, 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 right? I'd be yeah, yeah, like, yeah. nah. You could tell that. Like if y'all heard somebody go like, I wish a motherfucker would, you'll be like, nigga, that's a joke, dog. Yeah. Like, I, <laughs> <laughs> like this, like you, you might have said it, like because it's a phrase. You can say it. You can own. I don't own that. Yeah, it's a fucking phrase. But I'm just saying in the joke form. That's it's like, yo, I wish a motherfucker for wood, nigga, four and five. That's my joke. You know that joke, four and five, dog. Yeah. Run that, run that. Black people, black people, white people <laughs> hope, black people wish. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but that's it. Yeah. White people hope shit. I saw, I saw that's one it. of your that's jokes get joke. jacked on on social media the other day, and it was. It showed black people running. Oh yeah, and they did the they did this. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I that's think it. they used the language though. I think they used the, the really well, on one of them. I've seen that joke, and they actually take the audio. Okay, and, and tell the joke. They throw it the back to you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I seen one. I, don't know. And I, I ain't seen no check for the shit. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Man. It's an NFT now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, so poor, so now I should be getting something. Hell God, yeah, goddamn yeah. right. Um, said so. Do you still get out and? Just when you want to jump on stage, you just pop yeah. up at the comedy store sometimes. Just less, less. I used to do that quite a bit. I don't do that as much anymore because I like to usually only when I'm like trying to do a project do I go really work out like that. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, I just work out when I go get paid. Right. <laughs> you know oh yeah. yeah. Nah. So usually, Damn. like if I go do a show, then I got a set, and then I'll go and work in new jokes while I'm on the Ooh. set. But that's I'll what kill I'm. Two birds yeah. with one stone. Yeah, I'm just, but like, I'm already I, getting paid. So I, that's what yeah. I just. That's like, what I, I ain't go. doing this shit for free. I'm no, no, no. <laughs> I would do it for free. Don't, yeah. don't you know? Like, like when you're writing jokes, you're right. It, it ain't really about the money, but it's really about the time at this point. Like, if I'm gonna go, I just go in. When I do it, I can just fucking do it now. I built the muscle up to where I'll just do it when I'm going to get paid. Yeah, just, uh. just do it now. Like, how often? It. Like, are you are you hitting the stage? Uh, at least a couple of times a month. Damn. So you just go on the road. Yeah, so a couple of times a month for sure. Like, I'll just go out just to do stand up. Uh-huh. You know, and then and like then when my show wraps, then I'll go a lot. You know. Oh, because you yeah. Because I'm free, but when the show's going, I'm like. I don't even really want to, you know, you want to stay focused on a TV yeah. show. You got the weekends. You work all week. You know, you got your family. You try to get it all in, right? Yeah. You try to have some leisure time. And then, you know, and, but then I'll go and, you know, like I did I did Detroit and, and up north in Santa Clarita, you know. Right. And do, I'll do that. Is it hard for you to just, like, People expect you to be funny all the time. They just be like waiting for you to say something funny. Sure. Do, you, do people just look at you with their eyes open like, ah, yeah? Well, you know, that's, I, always, I always trip off that because, like, I'm not really, like, like I'm, I think of jokes and I'll sit around and I'm funny, like, to just to, like, sit and talk shit, you know? Yeah, but yeah. I'm also more probably philosophical, like, normally. Like, so if I'm having a conversation like now, I, like, just want to, like, answer the questions. Yeah. Like, yeah. I wouldn't be thinking about how I could turn it into a joke. Every, like, every, where I'm every like, answer is not where a punch. jokey joke. You know right. what I mean? So, so I mean, but, you know, but definitely, you know, in any any scenario, like, I can just find some funny shit to say about it. 100%. So, you know? with, with the neighborhood, are you still amazed at how people are, you know, it's opening up your world to, you know, people finding out who said this because, you know, CBS yes. is a huge, is yeah. a huge platform. Major, major you know network. what I mean? It's an interesting choice. Like, cause like to be on CBS is you're right. You play into a demographic that one, you would think like for as long as I've been around, you would think like pretty much everybody should in to a degree know who I am. Yeah. But I literally just left a situation after the golf tournament went to, uh, you know, when I was playing with some white guys, went to some more white people's house, and they kind of knew who I was. <laughs> he felt it like, okay. be honest. Yeah. Like, they were like, they was glad I was a nice guy. Yeah. But, they really did. so who are you? Yeah. Oh, my God, look at your earring. You know, like, <laughs> fucking, 
honesty. Like, like I'm sad. Like, like yeah. can't, I'm sad. Yeah, like, you didn't want to say the entertainer. Yeah, like. I'm sad. It's like, good. Yeah. But it was one of those things where, again, I appreciated that. I appreciate the yeah. opportunity that I literally had, had a lane to grow in. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, it was like, fine. Yeah. yeah that's good. And so I, I definitely uh, like the TV show for that reason, too. Oh, you know, yeah. that is. Different it, audience. Yeah, it's, it, it broadened that audience. And when you think about, like, legacy, you know, like, as a brand, like, I'm also, you know, thinking about the TV shows that I put out. Like, what do they mean to the people? Mm. Are they fun to watch? Is it is it my brand? Do you laugh? Like, that's the shit that I'm, like, really most proud of about the neighborhood. Because yeah. it wasn't that when I was coming on. When I first came on, it was like I had a deal to develop shows with CBS. And then they didn't really like any of my ideas. And they bought this show already. But it needed a lot of work to be able to, because yeah. it was built It was built off the white people's point of view of being in the black neighborhood. Got it. Mm. And I was like, they guess. Yeah. Why is, Why are they point of view in the black neighborhood? I can't do that show. I'm the other guy? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, the black neighborhood? It's their point of view. Yeah. yeah. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, see, I gotta ask you this, ask your opinion on this because I've been talking to a lot of people about this this week and um, the Bill Cosby documentary. Yeah, what's your opinion on like seeing somebody we all looked up to uh, growing yeah. up? He from the crib. He from, yeah, he from Philly. Yeah, and it's like the dude's eighty and he's still getting <laughs> clobbered. Like, like I, I posted something last year. I was doing last year. I did a. Uh, Black History Month, and I posted like different black comedians throughout the throughout the uh, month of Black History Month. Yep, yep. And uh, when I posted Bill Cosby, I was indifferent, right? Like because it was even more so the case. But what I really started to think about, kind of like what I'm saying here, is that he really was like about putting people on, and at the same time, he was this deviant, right? Mm -hmm. So you know. The sexual deviant aspect of a personality usually stems from another kind of psychological thing that was done to them at some point in time in their life. And I'm not going to, like, really try to analyze that part. But And I couldn't do that without necessarily giving them props for the shit he did, like the real shit he did that nobody else was doing. Like, dog, what nobody really put in black college money, they money back in black colleges right. more than fucking Bill Cosby, dog. Yeah. Like, he was fucking giving and curating and teaching, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, he was trying that shit. They, in, in that documentary, they talk about, the black stuntman. Stuntman, yeah. He was the like, founder, founder he basically that. created the whole industry by being the first black action hero yeah. on network with I Spy. Not mm. not doing any Amos and Andy type stuff. He was Bill Cosby. Yeah. And that show, and then you, you get black stuntman. He said he saw a white dude in black, black face, face do the stunt. You're like, nigga, crazy. Really? crazy. Yeah. Right, so... For those things, you just can't, like, you know, you, you can't wipe all that under the rug just because he was this fucking sexual deviant, too. And, again, you know, the crime is the crime. Like, you yeah. know, that shit is that shit's a crime, dog. Yeah. Like, I can't erase your good side either, but I'm not going to take it away is what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah. I can't, like, just. I just wish we could watch the I, I, I'm This is my opinion. I, I love the Cosby show. It's a show. Yeah, it's right? a show. And, and what that meant for our culture Exactly, that's huge. the point. You know what I'm saying? And again, you look at somebody like Woody Allen, they haven't <laughs> stopped putting his stuff out there. And I'm like... Ugh. Well, I mean, cancel culture will try it. You know yeah. what I mean? You know, Woody Allen, you know, he Woody Allen. You know what that comes with. And then you get... When Bill, when they came at Bill, it was in the height of the super-duper cancel culture. The, yeah. the Me Too of it all was happening. And so... Not condoning. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we're not yet. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. That's the... That's the thing. The crime is the crime. That's, sure. that's the part. And so, you you know, I just want to say you can't erase the other part of the human being. Yeah. Because he, he a criminal. Like, he did these things. He did these other things. He a criminal. He a sexual deviant. Yeah. Got it. He, you sending him to jail? Yeah. Got it. But did he not do this cold, dope-ass shit over here? Oh, yeah. Then why I got to fucking cancel it? Why I got to cancel it? Like, I don't have to cancel that. That That's real shit. Yeah. 
Yeah. Same person. I mean, there's a lot of people like that. I mean, have the people that we know are like that. We just they just don't get caught. But yeah. come on, man. In your own lives, people have real, true, interesting dichotomies of who they are. Yeah. And that's and again, you're not condoning it, not saying it's right, but yeah, you know. But you know, I, I I don't like you know just telling half the story, basically. Yeah. You know, but I saying? did like the documentary with the, when I said like. I'm saying that they it wasn't just it was they told both sides. Yeah. yeah. They told about the stunt man no. stuff and the, all the you know stuff you can give back but no, they, the lady the lady stuff I had you know I mean I don't want to even have this on camera but I had my own personal yeah. thing with Bill Cosby that on the on one level I was like don't fuck with him. <laughs> you know. <laughs> it was personal like yeah. you know like I'm like yo it was enough for me like yo nigga I don't fuck with you. That's <laughs> a person. <laughs> like yeah like for real like yeah, but, I get but it. But that was when your I, personal. When, that's your personal that's my personal story. But when I tell this, when I think about him as a human being, he still has things that, as an artist, as a creative, things I would aspire to do. Like things mm-hmm. I really on wish. the positive side. Yeah, like when of you course. think about like the the TV show, the branding that he had, the way he was able to tell this cool family story, yeah. and we all loved it, and it became the biggest deal. He made a lot of money. He, lot of money. he set records. He set the things in this business. That I don't think a lot of black stars have even ever met again since yeah, then. Yeah. I don't think nobody's gotten a, that I know that I could think of that was black that was getting a million dollars an episode. Yeah. Only Bill Cosby. How long he been on television? Man, at least thirty. Off. Yeah. Dog, 35. I don't think I don't think none of the black stars, the ones that we could think of doing sitcoms have ever made a million dollars. And I could be dead wrong, but I don't think the only person I think could even been that high, even close to being that high. Would have been Damon or or Martin, mm-hmm. and I know like that the monies wasn't even that kind of thing at yeah. that time. So but where you like, was a lot but I mean, but you think about the Friends cast, yeah. Big Bang, Charlie Sheen, yeah. um, uh, Raymond. You know, yeah. we can name off uh, Seinfeld, uh, Seinfeld, all the whole yeah. Seinfeld group, everybody. Yeah, like you know, all five of the Friends. Like <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you know, <laughs> yeah, 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 a million dollars yeah. an episode. Yeah. You never, you never seen that with anything black since then. Wow, yeah. I didn't think about it like that. That's that's a that's a lot of money, man. I mean, I, I, and so I mean, Bill Cosby set that market, but his show was number one. He he earned his spot. He had you know, you could he couldn't be denied, right? Yeah. But uh, yeah. these are the kind of things that you know, we you, we don't see enough. Or you got to say, I right, how I take you off the record books though, because you on the record book. Yeah, that's Ooh. your shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, just segueing, man. You know some some St. Louis love, man. Uh, shout out to Drew. Uh, he's from St. Louis. Our guy back there, DP. Yeah. Um, you you know Drew like shit. Oh, I got to pick my camera back up. <laughs> <laughs> you you uh, <laughs> Drew like oh fuck yeah. damn. Yeah, I know my shout out. You should have told me. Uh, <laughs> shout out, God dog. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you should have told me I was gonna be on. <laughs> so. I'm, with Nelly, you you were on Nelly's. Yeah. Um, was it, it was the fir- it was the first two albums? It was Country Grammar, Country Grammar. and Nellyville. I don't know. I may have did one little thing on Nellyville. Yeah. I can't remember, but yeah, Country Grammar was the one though. That was huge. Like we didn't know Nelly was going to be that big. No one did. Yeah, but I mean, he was always like you know. I remember I used to do a talent show in St. Louis, and I would come back and I would do talent shows, and so we had the Lunatics. You know, in a way, they was the big local act, so they was just gonna close and perform, right? They, yeah. So they do a sh- set. It was a big talent show, and then the Lunatics came, and Nelly just came out. Was, this is my first time. Like I knew a few of the guys in the group, yeah. Because my my manager Eric, his cousin was they like role manager, yeah. So I had met like a few of the guys, but never never even right. knew Nelly. So. When they came and performed, you just saw it. I was like, oh, this nigga's a star. <laughs> no. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I mean, they was great as a group, but yeah. I was like, that nigga's a star right there. <laughs> he the one. Yeah, that, yeah, that, that was that obvious. Because the star was like obvious. And when he walked out on stage, you like, oh, shit, okay. We yeah. get it. So, but, you know, they had a hard time with that, but it was great to, you know, to be, uh, to be like a part of a big legendary St. Louis project crazy. and be so St. Louis on it, like representing the whole thing. That's just dope. Man. What yeah, is St. Louis dope. known for? What are, what are they known? Winning Super Bowls. I remember that. I came out there for the a lot of things, yeah. man. I mean, it's a, it's a very Midwestern city, so we like. I mean, we known for you know saying her and there. Yeah, that's fact. <laughs> fact. <laughs> fact. 
Facts. Okay. Shout out to Chingy. We more or less, if you say her, there, you know, we got the Chinamans. All right. This is like. <laughs> I just China, said that. This, the China China China, I just said that earlier. This, I said that's the St. Paul sandwiches. Like, you know, this is, you don't get this nowhere else. You can order St. Paul. And the pizza's good there. And thin pizza, Emo's, and all the other varieties. There's a couple of them, but they got the thin pizza, cheesy. That's our shit. Mm hmm. No. And the St. Louis Arch that no one that lives in St. Louis ever been to. I've never been to the Arch. That's you crazy. Never been to the Arch? I've been to the Arch as a kid. I mean, and then not in it or nothing. I just go down you drive there. it. You we drive do the riverfront, nigga. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's different. I mean, the Arch is the Arch, but the yeah. riverfront, now nah, I definitely did. That's it. But you've never been inside the St. Louis Arch? Right there, yeah. you get the whips out. Yeah. Pull up with the riverfront. You been in, have you posts. been to St. Louis? Yeah, I've been in the Arch. Yeah, I've been to the uh, tourists. Yeah. The, the Eagles played uh, the Rams. Um, for the NFC Championship game. And y'all were some of the nicest people. Like, we were oh, in there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they was yeah. whipping our ass. And they was like, yeah, good game, buddy. I'm like, man, we was in Philly. This shit would have not oh, been no, like this. Yeah, yeah, no Philly motherfuckers. Oh. Yeah. But it's funny. Like, you can be in your own city. Like, <clears throat> I've never been. I live, live in, born and raised in Compton, but never been to the Hollywood sign. Never drove up there. Like, for, I don't want to go up there for what? For what? Yeah. yeah. Like, no, but people right. are like, oh, my God. You never, I'm like, nah. Do you, you uh, still go back home? Yeah, I go back at least once a year now. I used yeah. to go back quite a bit. My mom passed a few years ago, but now I go back to do fundraisers for Got her. It. But and it's usually once or twice a year that I'll yeah. go back to town. I still do a lot of scholarships work there and all yeah. that kind of stuff. But you like, man, I'm busy. I ain't no, no, it's just <laughs> like you know, when, once mom was gone, it's like I ain't really had yeah. no right, right, right. like that reason, reason to go back. I do have a my daughter and a, and my granddaughter live there, but usually they come to us like okay. something that's. They get out the cold and come hang out. Yeah, it's a night. You know, LA's a nice so. The yeah, like know, yeah, but we'll go there. So yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Let's talk about your bounce uh, TV situations. Yeah, like, you bounce is great. Yeah, so <laughs> it was good. Like we started producing, um, you know, with with the neighborhood and mainly back with Soul Man, and so we wanted to, you know, started me and my partner Eric Rohn. We started. We wanted to kind of like expand our brand a little bit. Mm -hmm. Bounce is a you know predominantly black. Program network out of Atlanta, you know, you know they got the, you know, the the kind of a digital platform, and they not on like, you know, they they're working on deals, but if they get on like Direct TV, like a big, they mean like a cable kind of formatted show, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. But if they can get on like the satellite, like Direct TV, people will, you know, really start rocking with Bounce a lot more. But it's just hard to find, right? Yeah. So, so, but it's. Uh, it's great, man. And you know, they 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 own by scripts now. Yep. So the scripts put in some money. They came in and they just really started letting us kind of re create things that we wanted to do. And we uh, met these guys, you know, Thomas Jones and Deji. Uh they had an idea. We sat and talked and just loved it. It was simple. It was like bros of a certain age. They was all partners and they dealing with life. You know, we, we seem like insecure and all that stuff, but we don't really get to see From kind of the male side yeah. and like on, on some you, like bro. just grown men dealing with things and like, you know, trying to operate and yeah. trying to figure it out. But from my side of it, you know what I mean? Like, so, yeah. uh, it, you know, we did the first season, it killed, it worked. And so they ordered a second season, and we'll probably just keep rocking with that. And then we just sold them a second show called Finding Happy, which is basically our female version of that. It was kind of based off my assistant who, you know, came to me wanting to be a, a dope producer yeah. and, you know, been basically my assistant for for 20 years as opposed to, like, Get elevating, going. just find yourself getting comfortable and yeah, you know, getting in relationships and can't make a move, and next thing you know, you just doing the same thing. So it's really based up. off a true story. In a way, we yeah. of course we yeah, yeah. we we changed it and made it more interesting, you know, more dynamic. But it's based off loosely based off her. So she's a creator. Dope. And now she a producer. <laughs> and so, but but it was all based off her being stuck in this situation, and we end up writing it as a show. Good. So that's it. That, but it's it's dope to rock with Bounce because they believed in you or believing in you, yeah. And you're rocking with them. They also do trumpet awards. Yeah, yeah. Ricky uh, produces that. That's kind of dope for your your producer. I mean, your uh, assistant to be like, "Yo, I'm I love you, Seb, but I'm I'm this ain't really my dream." And then you making it to a yeah, show. you fulfill the dream, right? Well, and it, but it took that long to kind yeah. of find it, right? Because what well, you know, the truth of the matter is, is like like most of us. We can like often stop ourselves from really going for our dreams. We 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 doubt ourselves out of actually doing the idea. You know what yeah. I mean? And so 
that's half of the thing is getting up and just doing taking it. the shot, just taking the shot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it was hard. Like, you know, like, you know, we got bounced to buy the show and then you have something in your idea in your head that you had dreamed up. And now somebody else who bought it come in with their ideas about your show. Yeah. And you like, what? They like, no, we, we don't <laughs> want her to be. I'm like, oh man, that's what we, yeah. no. like, and then you got to decide like now, am I a producer just selling content? Or am I a person that's like stuck on my ground? I gotta have it exactly the way I want it. Yeah. And these are the these are the choices of a producer. Yeah. Now let's right? th- let's talk about this wine. Yo, now, this we, wine is. We we started off lit. the show because Q opened it up before you even walked I'm in. Because I'm a, I, I do this. I do wine and golf. Wait, first of all, yeah, Q Red Diesel, wine. has a. Uh, well, I guess you guys don't. I don't drink. Yeah. Um, yeah. he has this uh squirt thing. Pause. It's a uh, uh, aerator. aerator. Oh, the aerator. Yeah, yeah. aerator. Yeah. yeah, he's fancy like that. I'm surprised yeah, you didn't bring it on the Yeah, no, I'm. No, they're great. They're because you know, like you say, when these guys, this is a fairly young wine too, but you know, when it opens up, it gets even better, right? So it's a. Uh... No, I just want to smell it. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, I was trying to. Well, no, I was going to pour some. So more. it's a Napa Valley blend. I do a yeah. lot of things, really, you know, based on my mother. So I do my golf tournament and I raise. Uh, Monday, I have a women's health pavilion at uh, St. Mary's Hospital with my mother's name on the front. It's on Clayton Road in in St. Louis. You go down, you'll see the Rosetta Boyce Kyle Center on the on the hospital. That's my mother's. I did that for my mom as a you know a a fundraising effort. And then she was a reading specialist, and so I met this guy that has his vineyard up in Napa. Really cool dude. We just kind of met through a mutual friend. Got to talking about it one day. Went and visited the vineyard, sat out there, chill. He just started explaining wines to me. Yeah. And he was like, you know, you know, he was like, if you want to just try something, like, you know, like, you know, and it has a little philanthropic, you know, um, effort to it, I'm willing to get behind it because I'm really about, like, giving back. And I was like, well, I'll do a wine, again, named after my mother, Rosetta, and, but we just named it Zetta. Yeah. So that's why the roses yeah, on the artwork. All the roses per- is fours all over it. Her, you know, her birthday was uh, January fourth, nineteen forty four. Wow. And then I'm April fourth, April twenty fourth, nineteen sixty four. So it's that's fours four, like all fours. through. Yeah, it's a lot of fours. So even on that label, you'll yeah. see like it's fours all over that label in that what looks like Florida Lee in the in the oh, in, yeah, the, yeah, in yeah, the red. Yeah, Those yeah. are all fours. Like in the red on the outside, right up under the green thing, yeah. and then you know it's it's four roses, is it's fours through all all throughout yeah. there. It's, it's like really a lot of thought, of course. Well, I mean, again, I, it was it was me doing a real homage to you know yeah. to to the, the lady that raised me that I and you know I uh, I just feel very blessed, and so you know I, I said. Went through all the choices of wines. Yeah. They send you the wine. You do a taste testing. Yep. You create it. You tell them, I want more of this. I want it to be a flavor like this. And so this is what we got. We got. We settled on this, and I was like, yeah, I like this shit. Yeah, I do too. It's a, it, it, Listen, it's strong. I can sip that. You said it's strong. It's, oh, it's strong. Well, it's, it's, got a, it's, got a, it's, it's got like, it's a Napa Red blend. So I got a lot of Syrah in there. I got some, um, a lot of Cab uh-huh. and Merlot. Yeah. So the Merlot is a very, you know, it's like some real grapes in this bitch. Like, it's a, it's a party starter, huh? Yeah, Ian, yeah, Ian's, Yo, Ian's yeah, my so, guy. Oh, uh, you know Ian? Yeah. We, 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 no, we reached out to Ian. Okay. We wanted, we wanted, and he was he was he was on it. So I just wanted yeah. to shout to Ian. Like he was, Oh, we yeah, yeah, no. Ian's great, man. He, that's that's really was one of the motivations for doing it because I had a great partner. Yeah. Somebody who who like really cared about the business. Knows how to do it slow. Like, again, we're not in it. I'm not in it for no, like, crazy, like, as we build it. But I'm not out here. You know, you, know, you have to order it online. That's yep. why I tell people, go to smithandeverow.com. Yep. You order it. It's it's exclusive. It's wine club type stuff. So yeah. it's not like you're not going to run to BevMo and get this right yeah. now. Because that's a different hustle. Like, if I wanted to do that, then we can, we can get in there. But it's a, it's a hustle that you have to be able to be, you know, ready to take some L's too. Like, because if you don't sell the wine, they they get it's to buy it back. You need to, you know, you lost. And so here we're doing great. We're moving cases. Can we do wine tours if we come to Napa Valley? Yeah, you could definitely, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ian Smith Devereaux, they have a great little vineyard, but he also is very plugged into the whole Napa uh, society, man. 
Like, yeah, oh, you can enjoy that. Oh, for sure, bro. Yeah, you got for this, sure. The oxygen is. is yeah, really I mean, you don't fun. drink it all, but yeah. it's great food up there. Yeah, it's I, great I, restaurants. That was a that was a great trip. Really, yeah. like, it's a great been. trip. Oh man, I've never been. It's definitely a great trip with your babe. Like you know what I'm saying. Well, we went like you go up there. Right oh la la. It's, 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 so I can enjoy Napa without drinking. Of course, man. Because yeah. they they one they got dope dining. So I mean, that's one of the things. Like you can fly really fly restaurants to yeah. pull up on, eat. Chill. French, French laundry. Yeah, you know, with French laundry, you, you can't can, necessarily pull up on that. Yeah, we, we just gotta up. say we know said. Said and Ian can hook us up. French I'm doing that. I'm, name, I'm a no. name dropper. I don't yeah. care. Yeah. Yeah. I'll pull up. No, I, we I went, went there last time. Though. Nice hotels and everything. Yeah, oh, great little course. hotels. You little, gotta go to Yonville. Little cool, little cool hotels. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, no, it's a vibe. It's yeah, it's a, a weekend vibe. getaway. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yes. And you're in California. Vibe, yeah, you should go. Man. But I'm, yeah, I love wine. So that's that's why I was like, let me try it out. Let me see if Seth's on some bullshit. It's really good. I'm not saying Thank you, man. Here. I appreciate that. Yeah. No, that's good. It's probably like, I don't know uh, the percentage, but it, they, yeah, it's got like some, it's got a little oomph to it, yeah, but. They don't, they don't skim on the on the alcohol, and I love that. <laughs> it's nice. Yeah, it's still. It's good. Red, so, wait, red wine. You have another uh, um, business we want to talk to to you about to promote is uh, the the hats. Oh. Egg and butter, yeah. yeah. Egg and butter. Why, egg why and you butter. call it egg and butter? Who's the haberdashery? Is it egg and butter. Yeah, it's going to be an online haberdashery as well, but I do uh, hats. That's, you know, I you know I rock hats all the time. I was yeah. I was trying to contemplate that when I came here. I was like, yo, I should put a hat in the car so I can, like, rock one of the hats. But I I've been, I went and left the house just playing golf. Didn't even think about it. But, yeah. uh, you got your own big the brim. Yeah, so... I mean, I love hats. I've been wearing hats on stage from very early in my career, like the whole fedora look. And so, so you know, I started to design hats. And so, um, egg and butter. Like, so I heard this song when I was in New Orleans. It was like uh, uh, with this dude, Kermit Ruffin, called a butter and egg man. He was like, oh, I am a great big butter and egg man <laughs> from way down in the south. So I was like, what is that? So I looked up. So the butter and egg men were back in the, uh, you know, Prohibition mm -hmm. 20s. The, the dudes that moved butter and eggs were the only ones that were still working because they was, like, able to get give people a little bit of food. They moved butter and eggs. So they had the money. And so they would be the guys that would come into the bar and like treat everybody to a round of uh, drinks, so that became that that became considered like a good dude if you was a but, uh, egg and butter man. You was a dude that because you would come in and make sure everybody had a little something because you was out getting money while yeah. everybody else was suffering. Damn. So that's where I came up with Egg and Butter Club because it's about the, it's about the good life. The like, hey, what's up? You good? I got it. Let pop off this egg and butter, baby. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of dope. Yeah, it's when, egg when and butter, baby. Coming. So the hats will be coming. I'm. I'm uh, I'll release. I did a cool little pop up for Christmas time. Sold about like I sold like a lot of them just in this digital pop up, and then and then we're gonna uh, come out on Father's Day. So, I but I'll do like a whole lot of. I'm doing some other things like we we we're actually designing like a like a Soho House type club that I'll do one in the Bay and one here. Okay, like uh, you know it's a private club. Mm -hmm. It's a little shop in the front, but it's mainly a social. Gathering membership, quiet, you know, you belong there and you go, but you can eat, you can chill, have a cigar area, a vibe, you know, social yeah. club. How many hats do you think you own in your in your collection? Oh, I have a lot of hats. Over, I got over 200 hats for sure. I, I thought more. Yeah, I, I, I just say that, but that's yeah. because I don't, I don't think I don't, I don't want my wife to be thinking I have yeah. more than that. <laughs> Okay. Oh, I've been point. keeping that number for about ten years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like two hundred. Yeah, like, about two light. years is my you know, I'm too I'm easily. <laughs> so do you have a hat, do you have a hat yeah, closet? Yeah. Uh, I got a whole yeah. It's a lot it's a situation. Of hats. It's a Let me tell you something. He has a situation. Yeah, he has. He has. A, he, yeah. he has hats. I got a, I got yeah. hats that just took over a whole fucking area that my wife is like, listen, Bruh, this, is this a shit's got to go. And you have hat cases when I got you travel. cases. I got travel cases. I create them. I make them up. We design them. Like I, yeah. And people probably gift you hats all the time. Oh, that's the other thing. 
Like, like, you do you think I like this hat? Have you yeah, ever got a bad oh my gift? God. One thousand percent, he's got. Oh my god, hat. I ain't got some hats. You know, <laughs> <laughs> he got he some like yo, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I couldn't even get this to my grandma on the way to church. <laughs> <laughs> like this hat. Oh my god, this hat. I know you like right hats, right hats, man. Here's yeah, this, listen to this. Here's man. some bullshit. Yeah, no, yeah. no, like, no, I'm not a pimp, motherfucker. I just like hats. Big fat. Oh, you like them colors? <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing yeah, in the closet yeah, to match yeah. this. Do you? Lime green and purple. Like, dog. Like, I can imagine. Dog, I can dog. only imagine what people try to give you. No, I, I mean, mean you know, I mean, sometimes you, I mean, sometimes you, you find some creativity in it, but <laughs> for the most part, you know, you know, I don't know what the hell you was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but cool. Let's go back to 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 your barbershop days with, with Ice Cube. Yeah. Um, I, I know that was you know very pivotal for for your career. I mean, by then you you know already blown up. But what did you learn from Cube, if anything, just about you know producing and, and making making sure that you you get your vision out there? Barbershop was a, a very interesting movie, though. Like I had done a, a few other movies, but yeah. the time that it came was. I was just really kind of coming up. I was known. I was on the Steve Harvey show for sure. Mm -hmm. And I think Kings of Comedy was popping. But I hadn't done really many other movies. Maybe except the movie Ride. A couple other little small movies. But I I remember I went to to read for Barbershop. And they wanted me to play the Anthony Anderson part. Wow. And in my mind, I knew I wanted to be this old man. Because I was like, I just used to do all these characters. And I was like, I know that old man. Like yeah, so, when I was in the, the read, shop. when I was in the read, they was like, "Yo, like, like, you want to do the old man?" I was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna do the old man." So when they cast, they loved me for the. They was like, "We want you to be this other character." I was like, "No, I want to be the old man." They was like, "You want to play that old man?" Like I was like, "Yes," because they would wanted to cast the old man, and I was like, "No, I want to play that old man." So I was like, "That was the." That was one of those things, like that choice, like knowing like a character is for you. And it, it changed my career for sure. Like I, yeah. the first barbershop, you that was that was one of those things that changed your career. The first barbershop, I got like a hundred and fifty thousand, and the second one was way, yeah. way, way over that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you know, you need this character, so y'all. Yeah, like, like oh like, yeah, yeah, the full. Uh, I was like, but that's what kind of what I kind of learned from Ice Cube was the idea of positioning yourself in the movie business to be needed as a movie star. That's what he did really well. He, but he wrote too, you know. Like Fridays was his intro, so he wrote his ideas. And but when when Fridays hit so big, his brand and his personality and what he was bringing became a thing. And that's what I that's what Ice Cube really kind of what I learned. He was like, to this day, longevity, right? Yeah, you know, yeah. that's to this day. Like, and he had, hadn't made as many movies in the last few years. You know, mainly concentrating on the basketball league, I think, but. Yeah. But still, you know, those movies exist. Yeah. You know, they still, like, it's still an opportunity to do another barbershop if we Hell wanted yeah. to. And like, it's still, good. like, there. Like, it can, it can happen. Yeah, and you you, know, you think about that the character that you played. It wasn't like we were watching you, like, oh, look, I said playing an old man. It was just like, oh, that's. I was literally that old was man. there, yeah. No, nah, that was, that was it. I remember that. There was so many, like, dope things about that movie that I love because, I, I felt like one the first day of shooting for me, we did this this the most dramatic scene in the movie mm. where I'm outside the shop and he's he he tells me that he sold the shop to the dude and they don't know yet and then they're having a good time everybody kicking it they don't know they about to be fired right they don't know the shop about to be gone and and we outside on the shop and it's cold it's snowing it's really in Chicago snow on the ground like yo. And we come out, and it was like, and I do the scene, and a couple of the uh, crew, they come up and go like, yo, yo, that was dope as shit, dog. I wow. finally realized what this movie all about. And we've been shooting it for like, you know, 10 days or whatever before I even came. Yeah. And they, you know, but it was scenes like, you know, it was like a burglary scene, it was like a, you know, it was they shot most most of the Anthony stuff. So you know, like that don't even have really had nothing to do with the barbershop because he robs a, a ATM. Yeah, right. Yeah. So you right, you imagine, imagine ten days of shooting that going. What's this movie about? A nigga stealing an ATM, you <laughs> yeah. know? And then they see that scene, 
they like, oh shit. Now we get it. And so that was like, that was special because that was my first day on the shoot and the first day like realizing like the movie we making. Mm. You know, like this movie is about to be, yeah. this shit about to be dope because we inside our country club. Like they, they really doing this movie. And yeah. I got to freestyle a lot. Like with my character, because once I started doing it, you know, Tim Story, who directed it, he was like young director, hot, feeling it, recognized what I was doing. It's like, all right, this the script, let's do that. And then say it, do you. So we do the script and say it, do you. And we was doing that through the whole movie. So I'd be making up a lot of shit. That's <laughs> fun I mean, and, and fun. You think about that movie, like you said, Tim Story, yeah. he's going on to. Do massive things. Yeah. Eve's going on to do yeah. like massive things. Anthony Anderson, yeah. Ice Cube, like that was a big Anthony Anderson then. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that was like yeah. you you've been around to be able to see people's maturation process. You know? No, and 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 it's really, you know, and even for me, like I mean it is a long time of like being able to do this at a level that's like I'm I'm appreciative of, you know, I appreciate it. I actually have a good time. Hearing these stories, my damn self like that. That yeah. shit dope as fuck. Like, yeah. You know. um, I remember you were doing Barbershop, and I, I think Jay-Z did this song. It was, it was was it Threats? I think it was Threats. Yeah, and you did, it was on the Black Album. Talk, yeah. How did, so Anthony <laughs> plays like, like, it's like, it, the concept is like, he's he's threatening you. And then yeah. he's like, so talk about the connection with you and Jay. How, how did that uh, come about? Yeah, like, I mean, I ran into Jay-Z many times, like, throughout. But I just remember seeing him one time and told him, like, I love to see how artists work, especially music artists work in the studio. Yeah. So I just told him, like, whenever, you know, I, if you get in the studio, I want to come by. He was like, oh, you welcome. And so I hit them up. I was in New York, and I just wanted to go. He invited me to the studio. So it was just one of them, one of them days. It was random. Like, I was in there. Watching him do his thing. He was like, I got to run out for a little bit. I'm working on this song, Threats. I, I had an idea because the Black Album was his last album. Yeah. And so I pitched him an idea. He was on his way out. And I was like, yo, man, I've been having this funny idea of doing the Beverly Hills Cop thing with you. Jay-Z is just the man who single-handedly put hip-hop on his back. <laughs> you know, he was like, oh, that's funny. I like that. He said, but I'm working on this song called threats that I need somebody just threatening people on. And he was like, I was like, all right. So then he left, and it was me and Guru. And then, shout out to Young Guru. Yeah, young shout out to Young Guru. There's a couple other people in the studio, but I just went in there and freestyled that shit. What? Just really? Just making it up, just like fucking have a good time. And then when I came back, and then he hit me like, that was that was a crazy call. Like, he hit me. He was like, yo, Sid, what's up? What's up, what's up man? He was like, yeah, that shit, that shit made the album. What? So what? He was like the, the threat shit. I was like, what, nigga? You <laughs> I'll be on the black hour, nigga. <laughs> then, he was yeah. like, that crazy shit was legendary, up. dog. That was yeah, like, yeah, dope, like fucking dope ass motherfucking moments. Like, and the crazy uh, thing about it, like it, it didn't say uh, threats featuring Cedric the Entertainer. You just had to know that was said. Yeah. And I never forget. Um, I saw you at like a barber shop. I don't know which one. It was a barbershop, like, uh, movie screening, and I was out here doing radio. I was like, and said walked away. I was like, yo, said, was that you on Threads? He was like, yeah, that was me, nigga. I was like, all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, because yeah. if you listen yeah, to it, it's yeah, 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 yeah. It was the whole thing. I, was, I like, converted into a character. I was yeah. like, I was. But that's dope to be a part character. of some hip-hop history like that. Though. Yeah, like, what? Yeah. Quite a few times, yeah. though, say you you know, you've been there. Yeah, man. You, people don't know you were real. Diamond good. albums, too, both of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, was, I was say them diamonds, yeah. though, but like uh, Country Grammar and Black Album. Yeah, in Nellyville. That's not, yeah, yeah. that's not yeah. 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 In Nellyville. Like, I mean, what I, I, I got to remember what I did on Nellyville. Yeah, you Just did. one little thing. It was on like a there. date. I think you was Well, dating. I know I'm in the video hot in here, that's for sure. Like, that's the big thing, but I might have did one little skit on there. And I don't yeah, I think that. Nellyville, it was something like you. It was like a it was a date or something. Maybe Lala played the voice. I forget. Okay, that sounds kind of familiar. Yeah, it was something. Yeah, I gotta think about that again. Yeah, he, he, no, he he hit part of the culture. Yeah, this is like it says a hip hop head, man. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. definitely. I've been on Bun B album. Shout like, out to Bun. That's a shout out to Bun. That's like I, don't, I, don't, I don't like I don't like rocks with them guys. Yeah, no, dude. I remember mean, when Mystical didn't know. Like when Mystical, when I came out on Kings of Comedy to here I go. 
Like that was like so super because that shit yeah, wasn't you even sure popping come out, out there. Yeah, you did. And I remember Ooh, Dr. Dr. Drake called me because I I did the <laughs> I did um, I get credit on Kings of Comedy for Peanut Butter No Jam for writing the song the the the, the baseline. So he saw my name go over the credits. So Dr. Drake called me, go like, nigga, did you write that fucker? Is that your song that you came out to? I was like, which one? He was like, what the one? Do, do, do. I said, oh, no, nah, that's mystical. <laughs> yeah. Are you serious? He's like, he's like, yo, this shit already out. I was like, oh, yeah, that's mystical, yeah. man. <laughs> yeah. He was like, oh, she's, I thought you wrote I saw your name go. I said, oh, that's the peanut butter no jam song. I got credit for it. <laughs> man. That shit. Yeah, you sure did come out to mystical. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And he's, hey, I got but it. I remember seeing him. Uh, afterwards, and he was like, "Dog, like I was in the movie theater, like with my family chilling, and had no idea that you had did that shit. So we in the movie theater, just imagine like watching with your family, and then your song come on. You come, he wow. said, "Dog, he said I went fucking crazy in that bitch. <laughs> yeah. I was yeah. like, yeah, he was like, I went fucking crazy in that bitch. I was like, yes, nigga, <laughs> you're right, you're right. That yeah. was like that shit crazy. This, like, dude, like I." Not even me and me and Fuzz just try to like curate people that we're fans of, but just like people that like are super super dope, and we're just thankful for the you know the, the conversation, man. Yeah, like, yeah, man. I think like, some sometimes we want to have a conversation of, of you know how you got to some or or just a, we're a fan of the of, of your of your work. And I'm just like, and then I see said it's on some we go cruising on in, in, in the old school cars, and he got to yeah. fi- you know find it for he'll pull up. And I'm like, oh. Said, oh my god, like, yeah, it's be a little, you know, on the humble, like, ah, it's yeah, nothing, yeah, it's, it's cars, bro. it's his cars. <laughs> <laughs> this is having fun. Shout yeah. out to my man Demetrius Spencer, that's that was the oh, first yeah, time I dude. met you, yeah, that's that's my 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 dude, but I had to play cool, like, yeah, yeah said, what's up, say, how you doing, I'm like, this nigga said it, you know, yeah, but, for uh, sure. Yeah, man, we 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 thank you for your time and just well, appreciate it, man. You know, I know y'all, you know, this is good, like, everybody doing podcasts now. Survive though, man. You know, very oh, yeah. easy going, and I think that that's really cool. I mean, of course, whenever you get an opportunity to sit down and you just chat and you kicking it with people, that's the spirit in which you want it to be in, right? 100%. Like a good conversation, yeah. right? Like so. No, that shit is all right, right here. This has been cool, man. You had the wine. Yeah, yeah. No, we know. want to show Come on, some we, love. We try to curate, curate this, man. Yeah, I like that shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, that, we, we like we love this. Yeah, shit. yeah. I was gonna no, try. That, I was gonna definitely, tr- people go get it. I was yeah. gonna try to sip some for the first time. I was like, I, I'm not. It's gonna burn. That's the only reason I don't yeah. drink. I mean, because it yeah. burns. Yeah. No, it's not. It's not Usher. It's it's good. No, no, I'm saying. But wait, you when you drink, it doesn't burn. No, no. That's you. You drinking it? You, you, ain't, you ain't drinking Zeta. Yeah, no, that shit this smooth. Yeah, this smooth. So that's that's educational. It's yeah. not, but it's loud. Well, I can smell it from here. It's not like loud. when you drink that, all of a sudden you start. To but you like, know what it is about wine for me. What? I, I went to a wine tasting, whatever the etiquette, the veins, and I'm smelling. Yeah. Okay, I just want to put ice in that. Okay. Yeah. All right. What's wrong yeah. with me? I couldn't. <laughs> okay. You know what? I'm saying if I was to drink wine, no. I would want to put yeah, ice. No. You know no. why? Because it looked like grape no. juice. You, I wanted to so put some you ice. black, black. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> Probably want to put a straw in it also, yeah. too. You know what I'm saying? Hey, that ass. You, you, know, know, you put that motherfucker in a tumbler. <laughs> be shady. <laughs> yeah. But what I get, what yeah, I get, yeah, if, I, if, you if, doing. So, so if I go to Napa Valley and I put ice in there, they were like, what do you? Yeah, they would slap yeah, you. Yeah, they going to be like, yo, my man, my man, you good? Mm-hmm. Whose man's is this? Who's man, yeah. <laughs> Who's Who's man's man's is but they have wine refrigerators, <laughs> nah, bro. Yeah, nah, but that's for the that's, chill, dog. Not white. for the ice, though. Yeah. Like, it's at a different, so it's a different temperature. Like, excuse my ignorance. So there's a difference between Moscato and, and a red blend. You so a red blend, you don't drink cold? No. Not really. You drink that really? in room, room temperature. temperature. Yeah. Oh, it yeah. could be a little Shiki chill, on. like, you know what I mean? But you don't, not nor like, people have definitely have started to drink red wine with a little bit of a chill on it. That's the thing, but normally it's room temperature. But, but it, it it is a group of people that like their red wine with a just a little chill on it, just not with ice. Uh, no. <laughs> no, that would be sangria, my man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's Kool Aid. Yeah, that's sangria with the fruit. fruit. Sangria, I know what that is. Man. The fruit. Yeah, yeah, we not doing. Yeah, that you there. put all the fruit off in yeah. there. You can nah. sangria that bitch up. Uh-huh. That'll be a great sangria. Uh-huh. Be honest though. No, I'm good. I'm driving. Yeah, okay, yeah, he's driving. Yeah, see, yeah, it's a he knows but, uh, he knows his work. But yeah. that that that. But, but you could make a sangria. Oh, you make a beautiful sangria with that one right there. Yeah. You know, yeah. you add like because it's got it's got a lot of great you know uh, fruit energy to it. 
But so you want you want you know you put that in ice, you can marinate that a little bit, add some you know certain certain beautiful oranges. You don't want no regular oranges. You want like some like some shit. I don't know the different kind of oranges. It's some oranges like you know you want to go to the farmers market, not the not not, not bonds, <laughs> not boys yeah, yeah. market. Yeah, not <laughs> not, 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 the, not prime uh, Amazon store. Like you know, you gotta go. Yeah, you can go get you some oranges, some man. Real oranges. Like, you some, like somebody that grew that shit with love. You know, <laughs> are you are you going to do another wine? You think? Are you? Are I you think gonna... so. We actually did really well with this. So I'm talking to my partner, Ian, uh, uh, and we because he, he loves the idea of us expanding it. Again, and uh, I like I like a Savion Blanc, which is uh-huh. a white. If I did another one, I I like that over I, over Chardonnays. I like a crisper white wine. Uh, my mother was a redhead. Why I did the red first? Got and it. So I love you know, and you know, I could have easily did a rosé because her name is Rosetta, and mm. you know. But you know, rosé is one of those ones. I feel like you go back and get because. It's a you know it's that's that's a certain group of people that do the rosés. You really? know what I mean? Like it's it's a, it's a click. That's a yeah, real yeah. click. It's a, ni- it's a yeah. niche. It's yeah, like, a like yeah. yeah, red is like red. Red is like more general people yeah, like all dinner. over. You can have that. You know, like you yeah exactly. You can have it for dinner. You can have that just casually. If I'm just don't want to drink much and I'm just going to yeah. have a little something, give me a little glass of red wine, I'll be good, right? right. Yeah. But I want to have a little something, I want to be social, right? You know, you drink a red wine, you good. Um, whites are usually for brighter, for me, like they, they summertime wine. They like outside, yeah. you sitting out at Soho House or Nobu, want, daytime, yeah. Bob, you chilling, That's you? you get your crispy white I, wine. I don't, do, I don't do white wine because in Philly yeah. it's like, it's, Seven months out the year is yeah, like oh. beautiful. Yeah. But like, you, but again, you go to Napa, you should oh, do yeah, you should yeah. do a white wine tasting because for the sake of like being there, chilling, like vibrate, beautiful day, you go out there, the white wine ends up having a, 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 a like a more up energy. So like I, I definitely consider it daytime. Yeah, like weed. There's certain uppers and there's downers. Yeah, when yeah. you use now, you have crossed over into a yeah. whole nother thing. Well, Thank I know there's. We sitting here talking yeah. about my mama wine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like weed. So it's like weed, nigga. <laughs> like you roll that shit up, you split that. You split that <laughs> guy down, yeah. guy down. You take that shit out. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Nigga. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> what? Listen, what happened first? Well, it could be yeah. some weed to go with wine. Like go some steak. Listen. Sure. The link is in and says bio on yeah. this Instagram page. Uh, we just thank you for your time, bro. Yes, yeah, salute, man. Yes, let's give it up for Cedric Dan. Yeah, yeah, big up, man. Yo, FAQ Podcast, please check us out on YouTube, FAQ Podcast. Everywhere you check it out, we'll see you next time right here. Yeah.